Perfect. Okay, so welcome and let me first share my screen to show you the slides. Um, if we can get this right, here we go. So let's share. All right, so thumbs up if you can all see that on your screen. Perfect. Okay, so welcome to the Gene Living introduction session to the blood group diet, personalize well-being. Okay, now I'm gonna to have to minimize these gallery because I can't see my things. Okay, so the aim of today is to give you an introduction to the blood group diet as a personalized online wellbeing course that we're introducing for the first time. Having previously done this as a wellbeing class, um, face to face, not myself, but um, Wendy Richards, who runs, who's director at Gene Living. She, before COVID, did them face to face and then was asked to do them online. So, this is the beginning, this is the inauguration, if you like, of the online um, opportunity to learn a bit more about the blood group diet um, in a very much group setting. So the objective today is to gain an understanding of how eating by your blood group supports your personalised well-being and um, body balance. Sometimes we could refer to body balance as body weight. Um, however, it's not always the first and foremost thing either in people's minds or it's the first thing to happen on a blood group diet. As your body becomes into balance, you may lose weight or you may put on muscle if that's what you have been losing. Uh, we, so it very much is about your body balancing itself. And then the outcome today was hopefully that you'll learn about the basics of the blood group diet and the structure of the course to know if it's something that you want to um, take further. Okay, so let's carry on. So what is personalized well-being? Well, it's very much about um, moving away from generalized eating, um, one size fits all diet plans and trends and fats and jumping on those kind of ideas, concepts and bandwagons if you like and looking very much at the whole self on a chemical level. And um, in this case with a blood group, it's looking how your blood interacts with foods and how that may have a positive effect or a negative effect. And so that you can adjust those foods in accordance with your particular blood group. It's about nourishing all aspects of your body when we personalize it, what works for you as an individual, as opposed to the, the mass, the group. And with blood type, um, it not only looks at your foods, but it, there's also a correlation between how your body um, deals with stress, what your stress response is according to your blood type and how best to handle that and manage that. Um, what exercise is best for your blood type um, and also what supplements are best and what fats and things like that. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but that's when it becomes personal. Okay, we have somebody else coming in. Okay. So um, where were we? So, um, it, and it's also about, so I've written here that generalized diets produce generalized results and about personalized well-being is about getting specific and getting long-term results. It's not a quick fix. It's a long-term results to your real overall health and well-being and about minimizing your potential risks that have been identified as um, blood group type risks, if you like. For example, in type O's, this has been shown in scientific research, they have more of a propensity towards um, ulcers. Um, and so there's, it also talks about cancers and things like that. So it's very much looking at the long term overall health of your body and using the blood group as a marker to get you there. And it's very simple and straightforward and has some profound effects. Um, so I've written here, it's about being right for life, not for right now. And there was an old saying back in the 90s of, you know, you are what you eat. And I've rephrased that to say you eat what you are, i.e. you eat in accordance with your chemical makeup. Okay. 
So the importance of knowing your blood type. So I've, I've put in a, a nice bright little chart here so that you can see that the universal blood type is type O, that's the largest, but it's closely followed by A. So most of the time, there's going to be that O or A. And it is um, global, if you like. There are pockets in the world that have more A's um, and more O's, um, and that's how our blood group evolved, if you like, as we traveled around and migrated around the world and we evolved blood groups to survive our particular um, territory, our particular environment. Um, and B is then you've got a big drop and you have a small amount of Bs, um, being a more modern, if you like, a more newer blood group evolved. And um, then the negatives tend to be, which is your rhesus, element of your blood tend to be a much smaller percentage of society. How the, the rhesus impacts the blood group is, um, is small adjustments. Often the adjustments are around quantities of food. Um, for example, in a type O, they may, a rhesus negative may um, have a little bit more protein per day, per week, if you like, than a rhesus positive, um, sorry, a, a no positive. But the book, which we'll talk about at the end, um, caters for that. It mentions that in their food lists. OK, so we're going to watch a little video now. And I'm going to do another little sh sh screen share. So are we OK so far? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. OK. Right. I'm going to sh screen share with my... It's not there. Ah, oh, Safari, here we go. Um, okay, this is a little video about the blood type. Five things you need to know about blood type. In 1996, Dr. Peter Diadamo revolutionized the health and nutrition world with the publication of Eat Right for Your Type. This New York Times bestseller has helped millions of people dramatically improve their health and well-being. Since then, he's written more than 20 books on personalized nutrition. Do you think knowing your blood type is only important in the event of a transfusion? Think again. Research indicates that your blood type is a key genetic factor that influences many areas of health and well-being. Knowing your blood type is an important tool for understanding how your body reacts to food your susceptibility to disease, your natural reaction to stress, and so much more. A single drop of blood contains a biochemical makeup as unique to you as your fingerprint. Here are five facts about your blood type that could change your life. One, your blood type may predict your susceptibility for certain diseases. Studies have found that people with blood type O have a higher risk for developing stomach ulcers. People who are blood type A have higher risks of microbial infections. Other research has found that people with types AB and B blood have a much higher risk of developing pancreatic cancer. Two, people of different blood types react differently to stress. Type A people naturally have higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol in their bodies and produce more in response to stressful situations. On the other hand, People with type O blood have a fight-or-flight reaction to stress, which results in the overproduction of adrenaline. It takes type O's longer to recover from stress because it is more difficult for them to clear the adrenaline from their bodies. 3. Your blood type antigens are not just in your blood. They are everywhere in your body, particularly on the surfaces that interact with the environment. These include your digestive tract, from your mouth to your large intestine, as well as your nasal passages and lungs. Because these blood type antigens are everywhere, they influence how your body reacts to the food you eat through several factors. Four, gut bacteria is related to blood type. People of different blood types have different gut bacteria. In fact, certain bacteria are 50,000 times more likely to turn up in people with one blood type or the other. Five, a one-size-fits-all approach to nutrition does not work. No two individuals are the same, and your blood type is the key to determining what foods you should eat, how you handle stress, 
What exercises are best for you to maximize your health and well-being? For information on personalized nutritional supplements and lifestyle support that make it easier for you to follow the blood type diet, go to www.bloodtypediet.com. Okay. The original home blood typing kit by Diadamo Personalized Nutrition is a simple, fast, and accurate way to test your blood type. Inside the reclosable plastic bag, you'll find everything you need to get started. The instructions. Oh, can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yes. I'm trying to see. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Now I need to share again. <laughs> Sorry. That one I need to share. Okay. All right. So hopefully that was a helpful video. Now, one thing that they mentioned was they showed you um, arrows pointing to a human being saying that your antigen is, is all in different parts of your body and that the foods we eat can influence the blood and therefore um, have an effect on different areas of the body. And that's um, the, the sort of the core feature, if you like, or core principle of the blood group diet is um, understanding about lectins. And lectins are food proteins that um, will, if you like, bind to cells, and which it means like a glutinate clump up cells in the body and conflict with different blood types. So there's the reasoning behind the different food groups is partly to do, or primarily, not entirely, but primarily to do with the different lectins in the food. And those lectins that adversely affect certain blood groups are shifted out of the diet. Um, and they're called avoids. And then foods that are beneficial uh, for more than one reason, as well as the lectins not be cre creating a harmful effect on the body are moved into the beneficials. And that way you are able to feed the body, um, remove any toxic overload as a result of lectins that don't work with your body. Lectins will be gone into more throughout the course so you understand them, but I, it was important to raise them at this stage because it is um, a unique part of this diet when you talk about lectins. Um, because foods, um, group, group diets, for instance, um, O's are more of a high protein diet with a low carbohydrate. Now, were you to go to a general um, keto type diet, which again, advertise and um, encourages high protein, low carbohydrate, um, they will include foods in there, which are which have, contain lectins that are not good for type O's. So it wouldn't necessarily be right to simply follow a ketone diet. So it is important to understand lectins and that the importance that they play in why this diet is a blood group diet. Okay, so I've mentioned a few things here on the slide that they interfere, interfere with protein digestion and that's key for our um, strength building, our muscle building and all the processes in the body require amino acids to activate. So it's really important that we're able to properly um, digest proteins and get the amino acids. Um, they can activate an inflammatory response. So we start getting autoimmune diseases and inflammation in the body. Um, for instance, arthri arthritic concerns, um, and a lot of weight gain can be caused by, in, you know, systemic inflammation in the body. So it's a lot of water retention, if you like. Um, damage to the intestinal um, lining, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, they can block digestive hormones. Now, I underlined that because um, digestive hormones um, are a precursor to the digestive some of them are a precursor to the digestive enzymes. So if you are 
blocking digestive hormones. They're not communicating with your digestion, telling you to release enzymes to help you digest your food and get the energy out of food. So you're not getting your real energy out of food. They're also important in the motility. So the movement of your, of your intestines and your gut movement. And that's really important. Um, just wanna check there's nobody waiting in the, oh, in the thing. I've got sort of a light flashing. Uh, sorry, um, they're really important in the um, movement of your gut. Um, and so when your body separates um, the food, takes the food that it needs, leaves the bacteria and the nasties out and is excreted from the body, you want good motility. You don't want to be bunged up. You don't want to have, and neither do you want to have diarrhea where nutrients don't have an opportunity to be um, digested and were causing um, exhaustion. So these are all robbers, if you like, of your energy, of energy thieves. Um, so it's really important that you do have good digestive hormones communicating and lectins can block those. Um, impaired absorption of nutrients and stimulation of organ growth. Now, what, what we mean by that is that it um, can be a precursor to um, certain cancers. Um, and now we've got a little audio. It's only a two minute audio from Diodamo himself. And I thought it was useful. He just briefly talks about lectins. This sharing screen is driving me insane, but we'll get there. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing back here. And then I'm going to start sharing this one. Here we go. So we we'll start sharing this. Hold on, I've got to turn the audio on. The thing to know about a lectin is that it's a very common class of proteins that are found in many of the foods that we eat that are sort of like the molecular equivalent of a piece of Velcro. And by attaching to the cells of the body, they can cause a reaction called agglutination. It actually causes a lot of uh, consequences that can be part of a real uh, difficulty in terms of controlling inflammation or en enhancing one's metabolism. The real significant thing about these lectins is that many are specific to your blood type and the chemical that they attach to is actually part of your blood typing system. Uh, so you wind up with a lot of the consequences of things that we put up with, uh, gas and bloating and water retention, weight gain, inflammation, that can be eliminated by watching the diet and doing a variety of different approaches to also blocking the effect of lectins in your diet. Okay. All right, so hopefully um, it was very brief um, and maybe too much to take in all, all at one time, but it, it, it will be a running theme throughout the um, course about um, leptins and just sort of plugging them in here and there to sort of keep reminding you and helping you to slowly understand them. Um, okay, so let's move on. So this was a case study that Wendy, who um, devised the course, um, had. And Rebecca, she'd had lots of eating disorders um, in her 20s. And it was horrid, really, that she went on a high-protein diet, like an Atkin-type diet, which was sort of the flavor of the month, if you like, a fad diet. And um, if you recall, an Atkin diet as well had a huge amount of dairy as, as well as meats and fats. And unfortunately, she ended up with a backed up bowel in hospital and caused a huge amount of pain, discomfort and damage, um, which I mentioned before about the, the um, hormones in the stomach blocked. And it's really important to um, minimize these lectins so that your digestion is really optimum. So she wasn't able to digest this because of the food she was eating, because she was a blood type A, which is a more vegetarian style diet, a more plant based diet. Um, we, and, and A's don't have the enzymes needed to break down large amounts of protein. 
so they suit um, a meat you know animal protein which is why they suit um, a plant-based diet um, very well okay anyway now she's back to a healthy weight enjoys her food okay so um the foundation is that the key to the blood type diet is knowing what foods to eat and what to avoid. So with A's, we said, well, we'll go into that in a moment, actually, sorry. So it's very simple and effective formula. There's four individual blood types. You find out your blood type, and then you look at the diet and lifestyle strategy for that blood type. All right, now I know a couple have joined only very quickly, but I just wanted to have a quick break. There's quite a lot of information contained there. And I was going to stop sharing for a moment and see if anyone at this stage had any questions. Oh, am I, am I being far too clear and accurate? <laughs> All right. Well, also, if anybody wants to only grab any water or do anything like that, then do so. But if you're still transfixed, then we'll carry on. OK, let's carry on then. I can see that we've got George has come in and we've got Ruth. Oh, well done. That's a very type O. I oh, you are. Are you a type O? Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the French in you. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, that is the thing about th this uh, this diet is that there, you know, there may be things that are cultural stumbling blocks. Like that's who I am. That's part of my culture, if you like, part of my cuisine. It's an eighty twenty rule with this. Um, at the beginning, you do it slowly. Then you may get into it deeper. But there's always that leeway. Nothing is ever. There's plenty of contra. You know, there's things that are to avoid but there are ways and means for you to incorporate anything that you want in this diet, as long as that you are maintaining 80% of the time foods that are beneficial for you, because you will reap the rewards, you'll feel good, you'll have more energy. The thing about um, the foods with the lectins that don't agree with you is that they become a toxin in the body. And whenever there's a toxin in the body, the body has to use energy to break down that toxin. So when you start changing to these beneficial foods, you're lightening the toxic load in the body. So the body can then, A, use more energy for digestion, because a huge amount of energy is used in digestion, but it, um, it can also reduce energy. So you feel more energy because you're not all your energy is being drained in detoxifying your body and fighting infection and um, that sort of thing. So um, it's a slow process of re-energizing the body as well as restoring and repairing it. I okay. do actually have a question if we've still got time. Of course. Um, um, you might go into this, but how does the blood type diet link to food intolerances? So not allergies, but sensitivities, I guess, and intolerances. Sorry, food intolerances. Yeah. If you have, um, apparent food let's say okay for example um, um a lady contacted me who is a type o and um but she's allergic to eggs now that's quite tricky because um in the sort of breakfast that we eat nowadays um it's they're very carb based and but we but we do have eggs and so for for a type o who's a pro high protein low carbohydrate breakfast is sometimes the hardest thing to to um get a handle on and eggs is a really useful transition way to get your protein levels in. But she's allergic to eggs. Now, she has to find ways around that. So if you have actual specific allergies, then of course, you must modify the foods available. But the foods are wide. Okay, so the food lists are long. And so you'll always find ways of modifying it and being creative and finding a way around it. And this is what we're here for as well, to help you find your way around any allergies that you may have. That said, if they're food sensitivities, they're not actually formally diagnosed, for instance, like lactose intolerant or 
nut allergy so you haven't mm. formally diagnosed but you you feel that you're sensitive to them and you may have some reaction to them which feels just dis digestive discomfort then you may find that by gradually introducing the um, blood type food food um, beneficials that those naturally resolve themselves mm. Um, but you can, you'll do it gradually and you'll have to do tests, you know, go back and try it again. The, the main trigger ones for people are not feeling great on milk, dairy, dairy products, but they haven't formally been diagnosed with lactose intolerance, um, not feeling great on wheat um, and not feeling great on um, grain and um, uh, legumes. Some mm. of that maybe that they're eating contrary to their, their blood group and they, and they have a light bulb moment and realize that actually when they avoid those foods and bring in the other foods, they feel great digestively. However, you still might find that they are still good foods for your, for your blood group. However, you haven't been, you, you've been having too many, an imbalance in your diet, which has eroded the digestive, uh, the gut lining. And therefore there's a real sensitivity in that lining, which we'll look at in a moment that needs to be repaired first before you can introduce those foods. Mm -hmm. So for instance, broccoli is fantastic for a typo. It's a real superfood if you like. However, I really, I've, my gut lining through years of being vegetarian and vegan has been really compromised. And I really struggle with broccoli at the moment, but I do emphasize at the moment because I'm, you know, I'm intensively repairing it. So I'm sure that that will be able to come in. So does that help? Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Thank you. OK, let's go back. And move on. OK, so let's look at the course overview. Well, week one, we're going to get you started. I'm going to encourage you. You'll get a, a pre-course pack, which I'll mention at the end. So you'll know your blood group. You will have the literature to have had a look at and have a read of. And um, then I'll encourage you to start a journal and that we can write down and be clear about what goals you want, what it is you want to improve. More, more so that you have a record and you have something that you're visioning towards that will keep you on track on those times when you're thinking, oh, this is too much, I can't do this, or you you go out and about and you're, you're out and you, you, you make, you know, you, you fall off the wagon. I don't want to use fall off the wagon, but you know what I mean? You change um, and go back to some old habits. I've definitely done that on times and think, why am I doing this same habit? But you learn and it's good to write down how you feel. So a journal will be encouraged. We'll, we'll, we'll have checked your, you'll have done your blood type. However, we will check it to make sure that you're happy with, that you've interpreted the results correctly because you'll do it yourself at home and the results are instant we'll have another little plug in at lectins um, so that you remember what, what they're about and we will also look at the basics of well-being um, which many of you i'm sure already know but it's always good to reiterate um, and then we'll have a, a get started sort of regime where we will look at foods um, for the first week that you're going to take out and, and the foods that you're going to bring in for your blood type um, and we'll also look at a few tips and challenges that you may experience that, are co that seem to come up. And there will always be time at the end of each session to um, have discussion and talk about things because that's the whole point. It's not about me regurgitating the book because you can read the book and the book is everything you need to know. It's about bringing it out of you, getting you started and encouraging you along the way. So it brings it to life, if you like, and keeps you on track. And as questions arise and come up, you're able to ask them rather than just putting the book down and saying, oh, it doesn't make sense to me. Or we start it for a while and then you put it to one side and you've got no one to keep you going. That's really the point of the course is to really get you started. OK, so in week two, we'll be looking at gut health. And I haven't put this picture in week two, in week two yet. Well, I might do. I probably will because I do love this this uh, this uh, image that I've chosen here. It's one of my faves because your blood type has a direct link to your microbiome. And microbiome is the whole garden of your intestines, if you like, of your of your um, whole digestive system. How 
healthy it is, how flourishing it is. And it is also your point of contact for your food coming into your body. So um, you want to keep out the nasties and you want to bring in the good nu nu nutrients. When, if you see in the um, image here, you've got little, um, in the healthy gut, you've got little purple lectins and they're outside and these gut cells are really nicely drawn together. They're really stuck together, which is exactly what you want. You want nice, firm together cells. And then you've got all outside of this cells, you've got all this lov lovely sort of mucus lining and, and lots of bacteria, which are these little blobs here. Friendly bacteria and unfriendly bacteria. And the purpose is, is of a nice, smooth gut, which is nice and healthy and all the gut cells nicely squeezed together is that it keeps out the nasties and the friendly bacteria um, helps you digest your food and allows the um, digested food to pass through into the bloodstream. Okay, then you see the impact of lectins. And what happens is that over time, if you are eating foods that contain lectins that irritate your, your um, George, do you want to um, mute yourself? Is that okay? I can just hear some um, some noise. I'm recording. That'd be amazing. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so as you, over time, if we've had a period in our lives and over, even from childbirth that we haven't been eating the right foods um, and we have been causing inflammation of the gut and we've been getting things, as it says at the bottom, allergies and joint pain, autoimmune, or, or as um, Diodama mentioned in his... Um, audio, um, gas, bloating, that sort of thing. There's an indication here that we have been um, um, damaging the um, gut lining and causing um, gaps to appear. Um, so it's called, you can also be referred to as leaky gut syndrome. And that is when two things can happen. So undigested food can get in. And if that undigested food is um, contains bad lectins for you, it gets into your bloodstream. And as mentioned in the audio, our blood antigens are all over our body. So if those lectins, which are the sticky velcro things he mentioned, get stuck to cells in different organs of the body, that's how it can become systemic and different organs of your body can become ill because those lectins have decided that they are attractive to those blood those cells of those organs because the blood obviously is the highway of the entire body and takes us everywhere up into the brain everywhere okay so the idea is that we want to get a healthy gut by removing um, unhealthy lectins from our digestive system and giving the and bringing in foods that encourage the growth of healthy bacterias um and also taking healthy probiotics as well that are um, in tune with your gut bacteria because we, what we will be talking about is that different blood groups have different bacteria, friendly bacteria that are particularly um, beneficial to them. So you wanna promote taking those and maybe disinclined to take a one-size-fits-all probiotic which may either not contain um, um, friendly bacteria that are particularly good for your blood type or they may contain ones that aren't good for your blood type. Um, although it is important that um, to remember that we have billions of different bacteria and it's important that we have that diversity but getting in the good foods and the good pro friendly bow bacteria will be promoting a really healthy gut lining and um, flourishing and encouraging a really diverse um, probiotic um, soup, if you like, in your um, digestive system to fully digest your food and support your immune system. So we'll be looking at that. We'll also be looking in the gut health is that we'll be looking at your fingerprints. So in your part of your um, pack that you'll get on the course is a fingerprint kit and during week two we'll take our fingerprints 
it might take a bit of time. It's not always the easiest thing to do. I might have to get my husband to jump in who seems to be a pro at, at taking fingerprints. But anyway, we'll do our fingerprints and we can have a look at them um, because they are an indication of the health of your gut lining. And it is important to remember that this, if your gut lining is very compromised, and I can tell you that mine is, stroke was, it may take a year to show up on your fingerprints that it's being repaired, if you like, and renovated through this diet. Um, but you should, but it will be doing the work all that time. So internally, you'll be repairing it. So it's not like, oh, I've got it, I've, I've compromised it, it'll never get you know, that's it, I've ruined, not at all. This is the whole point of this diet is that we're repairing and regenerating the body. So week three, we'll look at stress and exercise. Um, as I mentioned earlier, different blood, um, different blood groups um, respond to stress in different ways. For example, type O, um, there's a real link between dopamine and adrenaline with type O. What tends to happen is that they have this enzyme, I don't know the name of the enzyme, I can't remember, it's quite long a name. Uh, they have an enzyme, typos, in their blood, which means that they will release dopamine. Dopamine is the happy, satisfaction, um, up feeling, um, high feeling, if you like, natural high feeling, motivation. Um, and they have an, we have an enzyme in our blood that quickly transfers dopamine to adrenaline, which you don't want, okay, it's a stress hormone. Small amounts of adrenaline are fine, but you don't need them. We want to increase your dopamine and reduce your adrenaline. And that's why it's important to use their stress techniques as well as the foods um, and the supplements as well. So that's really important. Um, type A's tend to have um, a resting level of high cortisol, um, which they find difficult to bring down. So they have to work with their bringing down their cortisol levels, their stress levels over a more long-term um, way, in a long-term basis, like all day, if you like. Um, so they become more balanced. And type Bs tend to produce higher than normal cortisol, but they recover more quickly than type A's and they need to deal with stress in a more O-like way. Oh, sorry, that's A-B's need to deal with stress in a more O-like way. So all of them will look about their different ways of addressing stress. And um, we'll also look at exercise because I feel that exercise is part of reducing stress as well. The type of exercise you use is part of health and well-being. Um, and it really works really well, particularly in O's, but all of the blood groups, the right exercise for your blood will help you reduce your stress levels. Um, so we will look at the exercise protocols that are recommended and the stress protocols that are recommended. So in week four, we will be looking at um, essential fats and personalized supplementation. Um, essential fats are essential because we need them, um, we, we don't produce them in our bodies, so we need to ingest them, take them in through our food. And there are different oils um, work better in different blood groups. So it's really fun to know what oil works for you best. Olive oil is a general, so if you're using your olive oil right now, that's fine, doesn't matter if you don't need your blood group but there are oils that are more beneficial for some blood groups and that's really exciting too. For instance, flaxseed oil, again, is beneficial for all blood groups, but really amazing for A's and O's. And, um, but even oil, uh, evening primrose oil, which is something I used to take when I was younger, um, isn't great for a, a type O. I can't say that I ever had any adverse effects, but then again, um, I can't really remember, if you know what I mean, you know, um, I was very young then. So, um, and then we mentioned avocado oil being a void for um, B, A, B and O. So um, type A's um, can go with avocado oil. 
because oils are very popular right now. You know, um, a lot of um, health foods are encouraging you to have um, non-saturated fats um, and that's fantastic. Um, but how fantastic would it be to know to be able to go you know what these are really good for me these ones I'm going to hone in on these and that's what's wonderful about personalized diet rather than standing in front of a magazine watching a television program listening to something on reading something in the news um, or opening a you know a Waitrose magazine and going oh the best thing because I remember this is all media generated it's of the moment and they just put, put it out there without any science or not science because oils are healthy but without any regard for the individual and whether it works for the individual so people will start taking them and some people feel great and it may be that it happens to be they've chosen an oil that is particularly good for their blood group and so they are feeling the benefits but they may find that they they feel like they should have this oil like coconut oil because everybody says that it has antibacterial, um, antimicrobial, um, that it's um, fantastic for weight loss. And yet they're not seeing any results and often feel that it sets up cravings and they want more and more of it. And often because coconut oil isn't a great oil for many blood groups, particularly um, type O's. So it is really um, another reason why it's important to look at personalized dieting and supplementation. Um, the Diodamo do, do do their own supplementation range and we will look at those. However, I want to make it really crystal clear that you don't, it, part of doing the course is nothing to do with having to buy the supplements. Um, if you want to, you absolutely can. Um, and because you're doing the course, um, I can get, I, I offer a discount on those supplements, which I use more and more and really, really enjoy using them. However, it's not a precursor or a requirement, shall we say, absolutely not. And supplements aren't a requirement, but it is important to talk about them because the foods that we eat now aren't necessarily as rich in nutrients as they once were. They're not necessarily as diverse in nutrients as they once were because a lot of the food we buy, we buy continually from the same source. You know, even if we're buying from the supermarket, they have the same suppliers. Um, so we're not getting the diversity. Um, and also if we haven't been eating right and we have got digestive problems or we're having any other um, disease or conditions, if you like, or health conditions that we're not happy with, um, we may not be um, absorbing the nourishment that we need. So at the beginning, at least, and definitely long term, it's really wonderful to get the supplementation in because it gives you that kickstart if you like. But we will look at general supplements, not only the Diodamo ones. Okay, and then week five, we'll have a recap, we'll go back. Um, we will look at your goals, see where you are, um, make sure that we're clear on um, your diet and if you're happy with where you're going with your diet that your plans in place um, we will do that each week anyway because I think that's really important to check in with you um, so I will try in each week not to keep the lectures part too long maybe just keep it for 20 maximum 30 minutes so that we we have time in that hour to then find out where you are at because that's the most important thing you can read the book as I said earlier that's not difficult um, it's about bringing it to life and talking about it and sharing and seeing where you are and helping direct you if you need directing um, and encouraging you and motivating you. Um, and I'll give you some resources um, to point to. And they are also, there's also an interesting resource um, with regard to if you want to go deeper into the nutrition side that um, the Gene Living have their own, um, uh, what should I try and say, oh, nutritionists that you can speak to. Um, so that's really good. Because I'm not, I should say, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a trained nutritionist. But you can go down that route. And they are bringing out as well a online nutrition course that you can do yourself in your own time, self-study, if you like. 
and I think I haven't seen that yet. It's being developed, um, but I think that's going to be a really nice, thing, um, exciting add-on at the end of the course. Should you want to, to do that, um, and I'm also then going to um, bring in um, a post-course support. How that will be, that very much depends. Um, it could be a Facebook group. It could be a monthly Zoom meeting that you can just hook onto, jump into, um, to see where you are and promote, um, encourage, inspire others and express any challenges you may have. So I would like to think that there was some continued support after the, the, um, the course, which will be, um, and sharing of information that will be um, free of charge. You know, we just keep it going. Okay, so how does it work? So first of all, um, once you've decided if the course is something you are interested in, then you can, I will, all, I will email everybody afterwards who attended to say, thank you for attending and, you know, do contact me, but you already should have my email. And so you can email me to say, yes, I would like to book a place on the program, which starts on the 12th of October, which is next Monday. Um, I will run another one, so, but I don't know when that will be yet because it's my very first one and I want to kind of see how it runs. So that will be my um, only one at the moment. That starts, um, I'm got, I've got two running on that day and will run over five weeks, one at 11 o'clock in the morning and one at 6.30 in the evening. And again, for an hour. Um, and then you will be sent. So once you've made your decision, and you can, you've paid, and I'll tell you how you pay, but there's two methods. You can pay by um, a transfer to Gene Living, or you can telephone them and they will take your card details over the phone. So th those are the two ways of doing it. Um, but I will send you those details once you've told me you want to do the course. Um, and then they will send out to you um, the starter kit, which has the um, blood testing kit, one of the books, so you need to choose, I've just mentioned the difference between the books in a moment, and then a, um, a fingerprint pack as well. Top 10 fruits for diabetes patients. Oh. Number 10, kiwi fruit. Uh, kiwi on. fruit is one of the most nutritious fruit with low glycemic index, ranges from 47 That's to good. 58. Okay. It is high in fiber and low in carbohydrate. All right, so we're back. So uh, that was the end of the course. I, well, there was a final slide saying thank you very much, but obviously Facebook decided to um, talk to me about kiwi fruit. All right, so um, do unmute yourselves if you um, want to have a chat. We've got 10 minutes um, and tell me how you're feeling. Who wants to start? Um, Georgie, when you mentioned about food from the supermarkets, what about people that grow their own food at home? Do you feel that that hasn't got enough nutrients in it too? Um, no, I think that's fantastic. I think absolutely fantastic if you're growing food from home because um, you will um, naturally, as you replenish the soil and work in the soil and mulch the soil and using your compost, um, be putting in different nutrients back into the soil. Um, you know that it will be pesticide free, so you will then therefore get the most nutrients from it. But a lot of the food from the supermarkets is um, made en masse and therefore um, is sort of sad standardized. They want everything the same and they want large product producing of it. I'm not saying you can't eat, supermarket food I eat supermarket food it's fantastic you know that's what we do um, but if you grow your own that's amazing too and especially if you grow your own and you share with others who are growing their own because then you are getting even more diversity okay thank you okay um is it Georgie or Georgina sorry I don't mind Georgie's fine yeah, okay. <laughs> um I also wanted to ask whether at any point in this you look at um, alcohol and how that affects digestion and, and if there's differences in blood types. Yes, I mean, alcohol um, 
is looked at in the book. It is addressed in the books, and which I must remember to talk about the books. Um, it is addressed in the books. Um, I ha I, whether I actually specifically talk about it on the course, I think it's one of those things that somebody will raise. Mm. We'll talk about it as a group, as opposed to having a slide on it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking sort of food is one thing, but then it's, alcohol, coffee, all that kind of stuff, how that then affects digestion as well, I wondered. Yes, it's a good question because what I like about this is that he doesn't miss anything and as much as he's got a lot of information about beverages, very American beverages, but about drinks. And um, his, he does disencourage um, caffeine for certain blood groups and he neutralizes it, if you like for others coffee and things is never going to be up there as a beneficial um sometimes it can be helpful but um it is ultimately an irritant to the body um and it can block absorption especially around calcium i believe um but i could be wrong there but i do remember wendy talking about um the blocking effects of certain nutrients being blocked from absorption through coffee. And we are big, we've become very big coffee drinkers. Um, so you can wean yourself off it. That's not, if, if it's contrary and you want to, you know, do that, don't worry about um, taking yourself off. You know, if, a, if the diet says, oh no, I can't have coffee. That's okay. You start bringing in other things that are beneficial and taking it off. And you'll soon notice that if you go back onto it, you don't feel so good on it. And mm. the most important thing is that over time, working with this diet slowly and introducing it slowly, you start feeling better. And then you take things that aren't in, in alignment, if you like. You might take them once, but you might take them two or three days in a row. And you think, oh God, I feel rubbish. Mm. And suddenly the appeal of them reduces because actually the feeling good is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But yes, beverages and drinks and stuff are definitely addressed. Okay. Any other questions? So hopefully, um, just any, I think those who have joined should all- oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I had to unmute myself, muted myself rather. Yeah. Um, a long time ago, uh, I received, I don't know how I got it, a video which explained the more, um, it was very interesting from the Dadamo laboratories. Uh, and it explained, you know, the more scientific side of it. And it, showed, it explained very clearly about the lectins and everything else. I've still got it. Um, and then I've, put it aside on the shelf and did nothing about it for years, but still, I've still got it. And it's, it was really good because some people need the more, um, you know, scientific approach, if you like. I mean, he, I believe he has uh, a laboratory in the States where, you know, they carry on doing research and testing and all this. Is there anything like this still available? It was at the time, it was a video. It would be a DVD, yeah. it would be a, a link or something, of course. Yeah, I, um, it's a really good question. And thank you for asking that. I don't have the answer. Um, North American Pharmaceuticals is his um, laboratory where you're right, they absolutely do carry on testing. And that's why he's updating his database all the time with foods and um, beneficials for the, um, the blood type. And he's expanding his work all the time and updating his pharmaceuticals, you know, his supplement range. If there's a scientific video, I can find out, we can provide a link to it. Um, I'm not sure that the course is, it's quite a short course. And I'm not sure that's something that we would run in great detail because it's more about ensuring that you understand it and you start implementing it because the book the yeah. books of which these are the two books, Eat Right for Your Type and Live Right for Your Type, um, are substantial. 
um, and yeah. you're one of those and they are easy to follow as you obviously you, you you've got them and you've read them I'm sure um, the eat right has been updated so if you haven't had that that would be worth getting um, and it's re that has all the sort of science if you like contained in it so I don't yes, yes. I don't want the course to regurgitate the the book or mirror the book I want the course to enhance the book by getting people in a group on board doing it asking questions and so the, the questions that you've just asked that could naturally come up and we could find a resource for it and bring it in to the course do you see what I mean yes yeah no it's books are easy to read and then it's, you have to do it and so the support is very important Yes, yeah. I think so. I think that's where we um, at Gene Living want to go is the group is about support and encouraging you and keeping you on track. Because once you've done it over a five week period, it's pretty, it's pretty part of you, you know, you get it. And you'll have pitfalls, you'll have challenges, and you'll be able to get through them. But if you're on your own doing that, it's very easy to read something in the press, um, listen to somebody, somebody around the dinner table and get distracted and put off and someone saying oh no you know you want to have this diet or oh no did you not hear about so and so and it's so easy for the human mind the human brain to panic and go oh god no I, 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 maybe I'm doing the wrong thing and then confusion comes in so this is about gaining confidence and clarity and that's when you'll get um, results mm -hmm. And it's not about changing everybody else in the family. You do it, you get it right, then they'll see you change and they'll be interested. But, you know, focus on yourself and getting you well and you balanced. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're pretty much there. Uh, so all there is to say is that do email me um, if you'd like to do the course, I will make sure that I've got everyone down who came today. So Anne, Lydia and Lillian, George and Ruth. Thank you all for coming. Really grateful, really grateful for spending your evening here listening to me. And um, yes, do email if you'd like to do the courses on Monday. The, please, there is no pressure other than the fact that we do have to get the pre-course material out to you if you don't know your blood type and want to get the book to you and stuff. So we do have a little bit of I'd quite like to, you know, but please, in your time, take your time, enjoy your evening, and thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, bye Lydia. <laughs> <laughs>